In order to log on with different users, instead of doing it always with the administrator user, we must first modify Workflow's execution mode in Genexus. In the Preferences window, in the Environment Properties, we go to Workflow, and in Execution Mode, we change Prototyper to Standard Client. If we execute the Flight Ticket Reservation diagram, we will see that the Workflow Client opens a dialog box. In this case, we'll log on with user Peter Kent. We then press OK, and see that user Peter Kent appears as logged on, and the access to activities on the browser has been reduced because this user holds fewer permits than the administrator. Note that the incoming tray is empty. Now let's press the New button to initiate a process. We can see that a dialog box is opened with the flight ticket reservation process as the only process available for selection. We must remember that we assign to this user the travel agency employee role, authorizing the user to initiate the flight ticket reservation process. So we select it and press OK. We can see that the incoming tray shows the ticket reservation task as pending, which could also be executed by the travel agency employee role which corresponds to user Peter Kent. Let's execute the task and enter the reservation. As we complete the task, we can see that the instances of the contact airlines task appear as pending, since this user also holds a permit to execute them. We execute them. and complete. Now the add customer information required for traveling task is the only one appearing as pending. If we look at the diagram, we will see that the evaluate customer task is also being executed, but we defined this task with the travel agency manager role, so user Peter Kent will not be able to execute it, and so it does not appear as pending in the incoming tray. Let's execute this task. and we will see that the incoming tray is now empty. If we go to the outgoing tray, we will see all the tasks that were executed by this user. If we select the Add Customer Information Required for Traveling task and press History, we will view the history of the process, the user who executed each task, and the candidates that may execute the following tasks. For the time being, all tasks were executed by Peter Kent or by the Workflow Engine. For the process to advance, the Evaluate Customer task, appearing as NA because there is no user assigned to it, must be executed, and therefore a Manager user must intervene. So, we will do a sign out and log on with user Anna Smith, previously defined as Manager. When GXflow Client is open, we can see that, as expected, the Evaluate Customer task appears as pending in the incoming tray. Now let's execute this task by authorizing the client. Now what appears as pending is the authorization of the reservation by the customer services manager. Note that only this task appears as pending and not the check reservation documents which was defined in the diagram and is to be executed by an employee while well, now we are executing with the manager role. Let's authorize the reservation and complete the task. Note that user Anna Smith, as manager, no longer has any pending tasks. Now let's log on again with user Peter Kent and complete the process. One situation that the travel agency requested us to consider is that of an employee who is absent. 
since, as we've defined it so far, there would be processes left waiting for users with the role, and this might cause delays. For the task to be automatically transferred onto a substitute, we use the out of office functionality. To use this, we will log on with the administrator user, and then go to users, select user Anna Smith, edit. We choose the availability tab and see that a window opens up where we can define whether the user is currently in the office or not. If our option is that the user is out of the office and we press OK, then another window will open up where we can enter further information relative to the absence, such as defining the return date and the message to be shown when that user is called. If we choose the substitution tab, we can also select the user who we want to execute the tasks while the other individual is absent. In this case, for Anna, we define her tasks to be done by Peter Kent. We press OK, and once again. Now, next to user Anna Smith, we have an indicator showing that this user is absent. To view this, we log out and log back on with user Peter Kent. We press the New button, instance the flight ticket reservation process, execute the ticket reservation task, and the contact airlines instance. Now we have two pending tasks, the one performed by the employee to add information for the trip, and also the evaluate customer task, which was only allowed to managers. Even when Peter Kent does not have the required manager role to assess customers, this user was defined as substitute during Anna Smith's absence. So Peter Kent will now have the user roles of the person he is substituting. If we execute task evaluate customer, we can see that in fact, the employee Peter Kent is allowed to fulfill the manager tasks for which he is now acting as substitute. So, we've seen how it's possible to define security for our processes by establishing users and roles, and limiting who is allowed to execute each task under which circumstances. For further information, visit the wiki link.